In chapter 11, we started looking at what we could do with vectors besides just the regular cross and dot product and started looking at vector value functions. Um, we also started applying the calculus that we did with each of them. Now, we also talked about the unit tangent and the unit normal vector. So just to review that, the unit tangent vector was labeled capital T of T. And the formula for it was basically r prime of t, sorry, r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. And the idea then was we basically would generate um, a vector representing the direction of the tangent line, but not the magnitude of it. Then we had what was called the principal normal vector, or the principal unit normal vector, which was n of t. And that was equal to the main, uh, t prime of t over the magnitude of t prime of t. Now, if you recall, I gave an alternate definition of this as well, um, which went something like v cross a cross v. And then we still have to normalize it so over the magnitude of v cross a cross v. Um, we also talked about the acceleration in the tangent direction and acceleration in the normal direction. So acceleration in the tangent direction was equal to the, ve um, the acceleration dot your unit tangent vector. You can think of it as a projection, but since the unit tangent vector has magnitude 1, that's why there's no denominator. And then similarly, the normal acceleration component was a dot n. Now we had some alternative definitions to this. For example, um, the tangent component of the acceleration could also be found by doing a dot v over the magnitude of v. And the normal component could also be done by doing the magnitude of a cross v over v. We also had the property that the magnitude of a squared, the acceleration squared, was equal to a sub t squared plus a sub n squared. And acceleration was equal to a t times the uh, tangent vector plus a n times the normal vector. So I'll try to use each one of these in a different type of problem. For arc length function, we had a couple of different properties and formulas. We had the definition of arc length, which basically measured the length of a curve from some starting point out to t. So s sub t for arc length function was equal to some initial value, t sub 0, up to t. And the um, arc length definition for our, ve our uh, uh, vector value function, which is basically the magnitude of r prime of u du. We also have the property that um, the magnitude of s prime of t was equal to 1. Um, and then we had our curvature formula. So curvature was labeled with a capital K, which is basically how fast the tangent vector changed along the arc length. And so that was basically magnitude of t prime of s. But again, we had alternative definitions depending on what you were given. So this could also be written as the magnitude of t prime of t over r prime of t. It could also be written as the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime over the magnitude of r prime cubed. And then we also said if it was given explicitly, you could also write it as k equals the absolute value of y double prime over the square root of 1 plus y prime squared, that entire denominator cubed. Um, so basically we use this to find circles of curvature, things like that. And again, I'll try to hit a problem with each one of these. But let's start with graphing. So graphing, what you want to do is basically find relationships between x, y, and z. Um, and then think about along each axis, if you were to look down, and what would you see? So in this first example that I have here, if we were to look at each component, you can see that z equals x squared, and that y equals e to the x. So if I were to look down the y-axis, what I should see is a parabola like this, and this is z and this is x. And if I look down the z-axis, I should see um, 
a exponential function, which looks something like this. Now, if it's hard for you to kind of do that, by all means, feel free to plot some points. So let's plot a point like r of negative uh, 2 would be equal to the vector value function negative 2 e to the negative 2 4. Let's plot like r of 0. That would equal 0, 1, 0. And r of positive 2 would equal 2 e squared and 4. Um, so you can see between these two that quadratic kind of relationship going on. And so if we plot these points, at r of negative 2 we have negative 2. e to the negative 2 is about 1 ninth. And then 4 units up, so about there. r of 0 would be 0, 1, 0, so 0, 1, 0 is about here. And then r of 2 would be 2 units up, about 9 units over, and 4 units up. So if I were to connect these points um, in sort of a quadratic nature, you can imagine that we've got probably a piece going like this to represent one side of the parabola, and then the other piece going in the back, maybe like that, to represent the other half of the parabola. So if I were to stare down the y-axis, I'd see a parabola, and hopefully if I stare down the z-axis, I'll see an exponential function. Now, over here, you want to use your trig to help with um, relationships as well. So notice here, since cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, if I solve for cosine in the first piece, I would get x plus 2 over 2 squared plus y minus 1 over 3 squared equals, therefore, 1, because cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And so what I'm looking at is I'm looking at an ellipse centered at negative 2, one unit over, two units up and down the x-axis, three units up and down the y-axis. So if I can just kind of dot the ellipse in, it will something like that. But I've got my z component. So being that it's t squared, what happens is this ellipse travels up the z-axis and travels down the z-axis. And it does so at a quadratic rate the further and further I go away from um, the x-y plane because t is squared. So if I were to graph this, First, I need a starting point, so let's find r of 0. r of 0 would equal um, 0, 1, 0. So starting from 0, 1, 0, which is about here, I'm going to draw ellipses. Let's start off small and then stretch out, hopefully at a quadratic rate, if you imagine. And then likewise, going down, they start off small but then stretch out going in a quadratic rate. And this is going in a counterclockwise fashion because it's cosine squared plus sine squared, so you want to draw your arrow up above. Okay, now, can I get into the algebra that we have with vector value functions? So some basic stuff first. Um, domain and range, remember that domain is the intersection of all your possible t values. So if I were to expand this out, Let's see, the first one factors into t minus 3, t plus 1, t minus 5, and t plus 1. And then we got our square root of 36 minus t squared. So the domain for this would be all values of t such that um, t cannot equal 5 or negative 1. But because of the square root, we also know that t has to be between negative 6 and 6. Okay. Uh, for the range, we look at each of these components individually. You'd want to say something like x, y, such that. So looking at the x component, we have a horizontal asymptote. So x cannot equal 1. And y has to be greater than or equal to 0. Hopefully that's not too bad. Now, find where r of t is not differentiable. So not differentiable means that either the derivative is not continuous, or if you recall the derivative, um, the derivative is equal to 0 because that's going to generate our cusp for this. So if I take the derivative of this, you get r prime of t equals t squared minus 4 comma 4t minus 8 
go ahead and factor it. T minus 2, T plus 2, 4, T minus 2. So notice that R prime of T equals 0 when T equals 2. So that is my point time when it's non-differentiable. And so if I substitute that in, R prime of 2 equals, let's see, that would be 8 thirds minus 8 plus 7 and 8 minus 16 plus 9. I have no idea what that looks like. But I do know when I graphed it on my calculator, what I saw was a trajectory that went down like this and then up like that. And there's my point where it's not differentiable because if I were to draw a tangent vector there, it would be the zero vector. Okay, so moving along, um, we can talk about vector value functions and how to represent their intersection. So I will do that next. Then I'll look at these other two. So kind of like with the graphing, um, notice here I can almost generate that trig identity if I kind of play with the information right here. So if I write this as x squared over, let's see, that would be 9 fifths plus y squared over 9 fourths equals 1. I can pretend this is like a cosine squared plus sine squared, sort of a problem, and rewrite this as x over 3 root 5. Uh, that would be 3 divided by root 5. Squared plus y divided by 3 halves squared equals 1. So then what I could do is I could let x over 3 root 5 equal cosine t. y over 3 halves equal sine t. And then my vector value function would be r of t equals 3 over root 5 cosine t, 3 halves sine t. And since z just equals x times y, z is going to equal 9 over 2 root 5 cosine t sine t. Oops, times sine t. So there's my vector value function. Um, now, to write the line tangent at a particular point. Now, tangent requires that I have a position, um, and I also need a slope. So the position would be r of 1, which if I substitute that in, was going to be 3 sine of 2 and uh, 4e. And then if I take the derivative, we're going to get 2t. We're going to get 2 cosine 2t, two and we're going to get 4e to the t squared times 2t. So substituting in 1, that becomes the value of this at 1. Substituting in 1, we're going to get 2, 2 cosine 2, um, and 8e. So I'm actually going to write two lines here. The first line I want to write um, is going to be just straight up using this point and this slope, or I'm sorry, this direction. So it would be x equals 3 plus 2t, y equals sine 2 plus 2 cosine 2t, and z equals 4e plus 8et. But I want to segue into that unit tangent stuff. Suppose I don't want the magnitude of my tangent vector accounting for anything in that. So like basically I wanted one second along the tangent line would literally be one um, time unit. If I want to do that, then I use, need to use the unit tangent vector. So t of t would equal 2, 2 cosine 2, 8e. But since I want to normalize it, I'm going to divide by its magnitude. So 4 plus 4 cosine squared 2, whoop, 2, plus 64e squared. So if I wanted the unit tangent line, then I'm going to let x equal 3 plus 2 over square root of 4 plus 4 cosine squared 2 plus 64e squared, all that under the square root t. y would equal sine 2 
plus 2 cosine 2 over that same square root t, and z would equal 4e plus 8e over that square root of t. And I got lazy and I didn't write the square root. But you get the idea. So read carefully to see if I want the uh, unit tangent line or if I want just a regular tangent line. If I want the unit tangent line, then you're going to have to use the latter one that's sitting there. And then the last thing I want to do is to find the angle where two curves intersect. Um, so basically, I have to find the point of intersection. Now, even though they're both written in terms of t's, remember they actually be occurring at different values of t's because these are parametric. So what you want to do is you want to rewrite, rewrite one, maybe in terms of s's. So I'll leave r of t alone and make it t squared, t, and 3t cubed. But the other one, I'm going to write all oh, that letter. S of S equals S minus 1, uh, 1 fourth S squared, and 5 minus S. Because again, they could be happening at different parametric values. So if I create a system of equations, T squared equals S minus 1, T equals 1 fourth S squared, and 3T squared equals 5 minus S. I want to make sure the same S and T value work for all three equations. Unfortunately, there is one, otherwise I wouldn't be able to solve this problem. So S equals 2, and T equals 1 works for this. So now when I take the derivative, I'm going to use T equals 1 in the R vector value function, and 2 in the second value function. So R prime of T, oh, I should probably find the point. So T equals 1, I get the point, or the uh, position vector 1, 1, 3. Okay, so R of T equals... 2t, 1, 9t squared. So into this one, I'm going to put in t equals 1. r prime of 1 is going to equal 2, 1, 9. s prime of t is uh, going to equal 1, 1 half t, and negative 1. But in this one, I'm going to use the parametric value 2. So s prime of 2 equals 1, 1, negative 1. And now, theta, which is my angle of intersection, is going to equal the arc cosine of uh, my two uh, tangent vectors. 2, 1, 9, dot 2, 1, negative 1, all over square root of the magnitudes. 4 plus 1 plus 81. Square root of 4 plus 1 plus 1. So just to kind of recap, um, to find the angle of intersection, you're going to use cosine of theta equal to um, r prime of t naught, let's say, dot s prime of t1, since they might happen at different parametric values over the magnitude of r prime of t naught times the magnitude of s prime of t naught. All right, our trajectory problem. So we got this cannonball being fired 35 meters above the ground level at an angle of 35 degrees, and it hits the ground 100 meters away. Calculate its travel time, initial speed, maximum height um, above the ground, all that kind of physics stuff. So I usually start from the position vector. So our position vector would be r of t. And so r of t would equal um, the horizontal component of the velocity vector, which is going to be uh, v naught, if they don't know the initial velocity, the angle, cosine of 35, and my time component. And then I've got my vertical component, which is going to include um, acceleration. So since this is metric, we're going to use negative 1 half um, at squared, where a is 9.8. .8. So negative 4.9 t squared, plus the vertical component of my velocity. So v naught sine 35t, plus my initial height, which is also 35. Now, I know that it hits the ground 100 meters away, so what that means at some time t, v naught cosine 35t equals 100. 
and it hits the ground, so negative 4.9 t squared plus v naught sine 35t plus 35 equals 0. So solving that system of equations, you should get t equal to 4.629, and the initial velocity is equal to 26.369 meters per second. Now, to find the maximum height, what you're going to do is you're going to take your y component and set it equal to 0, because at the maximum value, the derivative is 0. So negative 9.8t t plus v naught sine 35 equals 0. But I know what v naught is, so we can solve for t. and get t equals 1.543. And since I asked for the maximum height, we're going to substitute that into y. So y of 1.543 is equal to 46.671 meters. Um, I didn't do a lot of physics because most of the people seem to be pretty comfortable with physics, but by all means, feel free to see me if you do have any physics-related questions. Um, Okay, this was the one that took the longest time to do. The unit tangent, the unit normal vector. So I'm going to do this a couple of different ways. I'm going to do it straight up with the definition. Um, and then I'm going to show it to you with the shortcut formula that we had. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about what you can do if you're given a single value to work with. So let's just start from the top. Our unit tangent vector is t of t. And that equals r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. So substituting in, we get e to the t, e to the t, 2t, over its magnitude, which is going to be e to the 2t plus e to the 2t. So the square root of 2e to the 2t plus 4t squared. OK, first one then. Now, n of t. Um, involves t prime of t. So let's find t prime of t first. Okay. So t prime of t means I have to take the derivative of that equation I just circled um, with respect to t. And what I did in class, if you recall, was I stretched this onto a product rule. So I made this the magnitude 2e to the 2t plus 4t squared times the derivative of the vector which would be e to the t, e to the t, 2, and then plus um, the vector. So uh, e to the t, e to the t, 2t, times the derivative of that magnitude component, which would be negative 1 half, uh, 2e to the 2t plus 4t squared to the negative 3 halves, and then chain rule for e to the 2t plus 8t. And then what I did after that was I did some factoring. So actually, we can do a little bit of simplifying here, but I'll wait to the end. So I factored out a 1 over 2e to the 2t plus 4t squared to the 3 halves. And what I was left with after I did that in the first component, I'm left with 2e to the 2t plus 4t squared. e to the t, comma, e to the t, 2. And then in the second one, I'm left with, let's see, that'll cancel out. So I'm left with minus 2e to the 2t plus 4t, because I'm going to take care of this 2 and that. Um, this part cancels out. So I'm left with e to the t, e to the t, 2t. And then we did this bunch of simplifying kind of a stuff. And what happens after you simplify and you do all your factoring is you have uh, 4e to the t, t minus 1, 2e to the 2t plus 4t squared, to the 3 halves. And then you are left, believe it or not, with t, t, and negative e to the 2. 
I'm not going to go through the algebra here for obvious reasons. Now, that's what t prime of t is. n of t is equal to t prime of t over the magnitude of t prime of t. Now, since I'm dividing it by the magnitude, what's going to happen is this stuff in the top and the front, the coefficient, is actually going to cancel out. So really all I have to worry about when I take the magnitude is I'm going to have t, t, negative e to the t, all over the magnitude of this part, which will be 2t squared um, plus e to the 2t. So that was one way to do it. But we also did it the other way, so I'm going to show the other way as well. Um, we also said, I also said that you could use that a cross v cross a formula. So let's go ahead and get those because we'll need them later anyways. Um, okay, so v of t would equal um, v to the t, v to the t, 2t. A would equal e to the t, e to the t, 2. So if I cross these, a cross V, or V cross A, sorry. V cross A would equal 2E to the T minus 2T E to the T, negative quantity 2E to the T minus 2T E to the T, comma 0. See if it makes sense. 2e to the t minus 2t e to the t, 2e to the t minus 2t e to the e, and then 0 for the last part because there's similar components. Um, and then if I do b plus a plus another b, so if I just write b over here, e to the t, e to the t, 2t, um, the value of that would be. Uh, now, actually, I think what I did was I factored something out. So I factored out the 2e to the t minus 2t e to the t, since they're similar in those two. And then what I was left with was negative 2t, negative 2t, 2e to the t, which means I can factor out technically a negative 2. 2e to the t minus 2t e to the t. And if I factor out a negative 2 or a positive 2, let's do that. And I'm going to have, um, no, I'll do a negative 2. So then I'll have t, t minus e to the t. And notice that's what I have up here. So if I normalize this, I'll get the same thing. And if t equals t, t negative e to the t, Oh, the magnitude of 2t squared plus e to the 2t. So, yay, validating what I did. Um, all right, so then a of t and a of n. a of t is the uh, acceleration vector dot the tangent vector. So a of t would equal e of t, e of t, 2 dot my tangent vector, which is e of t, e of t, 2t over their magnitude, e to the 2t, 2e to the 2t, plus 4t squared. So if I put all that together, I'm going to end up with a dot t equal to e to the 2t plus e to the 2t, so 2e to the 2t plus 8t no, plus 4t, over 2e to the 2t, plus 4t squared. And a sub n, since I've got my n vector, I'll go ahead and do a dot n. So a dot n would equal t e to the t, plus t e to the t. So 2e to the 2t, um, minus 2e to the t all over square root of 2t squared plus e to the 2t. Now, if you don't have the normal vector, I would suggest using that a dot v over um, v formula and uh, then use the fact that it's Pythagorean. Yeah. So I'm actually going to do that with the next example.
Because if you notice in my next example, I don't want a general formula for n. I just want to find what n of 1 is, so I can actually use 1 in my problem here. So I'm going to go ahead and find the velocity and the acceleration vector. So velocity uh, of t would equal 3t squared minus 6t and 4. Um, so if I substitute in 1, v of 1 is going to equal 3, negative 6. Um, acceleration vector would equal 6t, negative 6, and 0. So acceleration um, for t equals 1 would be 6, negative 6, and 0. All right. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just solve for a of t. a of t equals a dot v over magnitude of v. So if I do a dot b, I'm going to end up with 18 plus 36 over the magnitude of v, which is 9 plus 36 plus 16. So that's 54 over the square root of 61. Now instead of finding a of n through a cross v, you can also use the fact that the magnitude of a squared equals a t squared plus a n squared. Now, magnitude of A I can find, so that would be um, 36 equals the magnitude of A T squared, which is 54 over the square root of 61 squared plus A of N squared. So if I did my math right, A of N equals 6 square root of 41 over square root of 61. And then to find N of 1, I can remember that A equals A T T plus a n n. So I know a, that's 6, negative 6, 0. I know a of t, 54 over square root of 61. I can find t of t pretty easily. That's just um, r prime of t. So it's 3, negative 6, 4 over its magnitude, 9 plus 36 plus 16 plus a of n, which I just found, 6 square root of 41, all over square root of 61, times my vector n. So if I do some ma vector math, I'm going to end up with n equal to, I hope, 34, negative 7, negative 36, over the square root of 2501. Yay for calculators. All right, now some arc length problems. Mm. First, let's find an arc length function and talk about reparameterizing. So my arc length function is going to be s of t equals the integral from my starting value, in this case, it's starting from zero, to some value of t, and then the arc length component of what I'm looking at. So square root of my dx dt squared plus my dy dt squared. Now I want to go ahead and write this in terms of u's um, because I don't want to get it confused with the limits for this. So if I write this as r of u just so I don't get confused, this would be cosine of u plus u sine u, sine of u minus u cosine of u. So if I take the derivative of this, it would be negative sine u plus uh, sine u, plus u cosine u, squared, plus the other one, cosine u, plus u sine u, minus cosine u, squared, d u. And these cancel out. I'm left with u squared cosine squared plus u squared sine squared, the cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, so that technically reduces down to u, which is good because I can integrate that. That's a t. u squared evaluated from 0 to t, and so you get 1 half t squared. So s of t equals 1 half t squared. Now if I want to reparameterize, that basically means I want to write r in terms of s's instead of u's. So if I solve for t, you get t equals the square root of 2s. And so r, in terms of my arc length parameter, would be cosine square root of 2s 
plus square root of 2s sine square root of 2s. And then sine square root of 2s minus square root of 2s cosine square root of 2s. Right. So it's reparameterized. Ah, the last two problems I want to do involve the circle of curvature. So this will practice our curvature problems. And I made up two different ones to practice the two different ideas. So curvature, just to remind you, um, if it's given in parametric form, you probably want to use the um, R of T formula. So K of T equals the magnitude of R prime of T cross R double prime of T all over magnitude of r prime of t cubed. So over here, let's just do that. So r prime would equal uh, negative 2 sine t, 3 cosine t, and since I'm going to have to do a cross right at a lot of 0, r double prime would equal negative 2 cosine t, negative 3 sine t, and 0. So then r prime across r double prime would equal that's zero. So that's going to equal zero, zero, um, six sine squared plus six cosine squared. Oh, that's nice. That's a six. Okay. So then up here, we're going to have the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime, which will be six over the magnitude of r prime of t cubed. So r prime of t's magnitude would be four sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t, all that cubed. So now i got to figure out at 2, 0, um, what the value of t is. So 2 cosine 2 t would have to equal 2. 3 sine of t would have to equal 0. That's when t equals 0. So I'm going to now substitute into my um, curvature equation t equals 0 and get 6 over uh, 9 square root of this 3, 27, so that's 2 ninths. So the radius for my circle of curvature is 1 over k, so my radius is 9 half. Now i got to find the center. So let's go back to the graph. It is nicely enough an ellipse because notice that x over 2 squared plus y over 3 squared equals 1. So I have an ellipse that's 2 units out, 3 units high, starts at 2 comma 0, and goes around like this. So right here at this point, I need my circle of curvature. Now I know the radius is 9 halves, and the circle lies inside the concavity. So what I want to do is go 9 halves in from 2 comma 0. So my center is going to be at 2 minus 9 halves comma 0. So my center is going to be at negative 5 halves 0. And so my circle becomes x plus 5 halves squared plus y squared equals 9 over 2 squared. Now let's do this if I'm given an explicit equation, and I'm going to use my other curvature formula here. So the other curvature formula, k, was the absolute value of y double prime over the square root of 1 plus y prime squared, all of that cubed. OK, so on the side here, y prime equals 3x plus 2 squared, y double prime equals 6 x plus 2. So at x equals negative 3, y prime equals 3, and y double prime equals negative 6. So subbing all that in, I get absolute value of y double prime, so 6 on top, square root of 1 plus 9 cubed. So my curvature is 6 over 10 root 10 which means my radius of curvature is going to be 10 root 10 over 6. Now, this one was a little bit different, so I'm going to go ahead and graph the function and try to figure out what all these pieces are. My function is a cubic function with the root at negative 2, 
So it looks something like this. And I want the circle of curvature at x equals negative 3. So um, we know the slope. So my tangent line slope would be 3, 1. So that would be 1, 3 for the vector. But I want the radial slope because I need to find where the center is. My radial slope being perpendicular would be a slope of negative 1 third. So if my slope is negative 1 third and it's going to the right, then I need to go um, to the right 3 and down negative 1 for that radial slope. So my center, I'm going to start at the point of tangency. So the center is going to start at the position vector, negative 3, and at negative 3 my y value is negative 1. So that's where it starts. Plus, I want to go the length of my radius, so 10 root 10 over 6. And I want to go in the direction of the radial line, which is 3, negative 1. But I don't want the magnitude of the radial line affecting anything that I'm doing. So I'm going to divide by the magnitude of the radial line. So you put all that together and you get 2, negative 8 thirds. So that's my center. So the equation for my circle is going to be x minus 2 squared plus y plus 8 thirds squared equals 10 root 10 over 6 squared. Happy studying, everyone. Feel free to email me um, or stop by before school if you have any questions.